Hello and welcome to our daily devotion for August 13th, 2020. We're continuing our walk through the Sermon on the Mount. We begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today we're looking at secret giving, reading through Matthew 6, 1 to 4. Jesus says, Beware of practicing your righteousness before other people in order to be seen by them, for then you will have no reward from your Father who is in heaven. Thus, when you give to the needy, sound no trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may be praised by others. Truly, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you give to the needy, do not let your, let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Sometimes that's rather difficult, isn't it, my dear friends in Christ, to give or do something good and, and have it be done in secret. Some things are kind of open and plain. But the problem here is that people were doing things in order to be seen, that they were doing good things so that others could see them and praise them. So in reality, the problem wasn't necessarily that people knew about the good things they were doing, but the motivation for their good deeds was wrong. They were motivated by a desire to promote themselves and not necessarily concerned about those whom they were helping. Luther gives us some good um, words on Matthew 6, 1 to 4. He says, So far the Lord Christ has been denouncing the false teachings and interpretations of Scripture, which had led people to refrain from sinning with their fists while their hearts remained completely impure within. And he has been demonstrating and emphasizing the true interpretation of the Scriptures and the law. Now he goes on from their teaching to denounce their life as well. He attacks their good works, and he refuses to concede that they have anything good either in their teaching or in their works. This in spite of the fact that, as holy people, they taught the scriptures every day, that they did good works, and that they had a reputation as the finest kernel of the whole Jewish people and the holiest people on earth. So Jesus was attacking their teaching and attacking their deeds. Of course, this didn't exactly make him very popular with the religious leaders of his day, but Jesus didn't come here to be popular. He came here for a reason, for a purpose. One, he did want to teach us. He wanted to teach the people of his time, and he wanted those teachings kept so that we, even in this day, a couple thousand years later, could have those teachings, and we do, and we're thankful for that. Jesus' teachings are phenomenal, phenomenal. And here in the Sermon on the Mount, yes, he does attack the teachings of the religious leaders of that day and also attacks their actions, their actions. What was the problem? The problem was, in regard to their actions, that they weren't doing good things for the benefit of other people or necessarily glorify God. They were doing good things so that they could be praised, so that they themselves would be in the spotlight, in the limelight. Well, is that a good deed? If you're doing something allegedly for someone else, but in reality you're doing it for yourself? No. And that's that's Jesus' whole point. Luther continues, He is not denouncing the work itself, but their purpose and aim in doing it. In itself, the work would be good, but they ruined it by smearing their filth all over it because by it they were seeking only their own glory and honor before the people and were not doing it for the sake of God or their neighbor. Therefore he pronounces a short and severe judgment that all such alms, regardless of how great or abundant or expensive they may be, are useless and valueless. Useless and valueless. And in some ways, they're even worse than that. When we start to depend on our good deeds or our acts of righteousness as if they were going to save us, then we're really in trouble. Because the question is then, in whom are we trusting? If we're trusting in our acts, our deeds, then we're no longer trusting in Christ. And it's really bad when we're doing things for other people, or at least we're giving the impression that we're doing things for other people, But in reality, we're doing those things for ourselves. And that was the problem. That was the hypocrisy. And that's what Jesus rebuked. 
and rebuked it clearly. He attacked their teachings. He's attacking their actions because the motivation for them was not right. So don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. Don't sound a trumpet. Don't make big fanfare. Do your good deeds quietly. Let God see them. Do your good deeds to help other people. Do your good deeds to glorify God. Don't do them as a way to try to make yourself look better, either in people's eyes or in God's eyes. Because you're not, then you're not trusting in Christ. You're trusting in yourself and what you can do. May your eyes always be fixed on Jesus, the author and perfecter of your faith. May your eyes always be fixed on Jesus, looking to him for guidance, for direction, but most importantly, for forgiveness. For forgiveness every day. And keep your eyes focused on Jesus as you live out your life here under his grace and with his blessing and appreciating that wonderful forgiveness that he earned for you. Amen. We're looking at the hymn, We Give Thee But Thine Own. We give thee but thine own, whate'er the gift may be. All that we have is thine alone, a trust, O Lord, from thee. May we thy bounties thus, as stewards, true receive, and gladly, as thou blessest us, to thee our first fruits give. O hearts are bruised and dead, and homes are bare and cold, and lambs for whom the shepherd bled are straying from the fold. To comfort and to bless, to find a balm for woe, to tend the lone and fatherless is angels' work below. The captive to release, to God the lost to bring. To teach the way of life and peace, it is a Christ-like thing. And we believe thy word, though dim our faith may be. Whate'er for thine we do, O Lord, we do it unto thee. We pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we give you hearty thanks that you have called us out of the darkness of spiritual ignorance through the light of your gospel, that you have called us out of the darkness of sin and eternal death to the light of eternal life through Christ, and that you have called us forth from a life of sin to a life of service freely given to you. We pray, keep us steadfast and true to our high spiritual calling, endow us richly with the Holy Spirit, and by his grace sustain our faith, dispelling our doubts and confusion, and keeping us faithful and true to your word. Do not permit us to stray from your word in the slightest, and help us through diligent use of the scriptures to grow in knowledge to abound in faith, and to be strengthened in our inner man. Enable us both by word and deed to make a good profession of our faith before the world. Direct our footsteps along the path of righteousness. Help us subdue our sinful flesh and prevent us from being dazzled by the attractions of this world. Restrain the devil and his wicked angels lest they threaten our faith and strike terror in our hearts. Create in us humble hearts so that we daily make confession of our sins. For Jesus' sake, forgive our sins and put our consciences to rest. Fill our hearts with such gratitude for your salvation that we gladly set about to bring the light of the gospel to those who are without Christ and without hope. Keep us from all thoughts, all speech, all desires, all deeds, which do not glorify the precious name of our Savior. Cause every Christian virtue to flourish in our lives. Teach us to pray without ceasing. Through the Spirit, put into our minds and hearts the things we ought to ask of you and the names of those for whom our prayers are needed. O Father, be our strength, our hope, and our light. Guide and keep us through the years that remain until by grace in Christ we come to eternal life. In his name we pray. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. 
Amen.